There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with a very special guest, Kieran of KD Books. This is an ongoing series of Zoom chats that I've been doing since coronavirus kind of locked us all in our apartments. Chatting with new booktubers <laughs> or other booktubers who need lots more subscribers than they have and nobody foots that bill better than Kieran. So welcome to my channel, Kieran. Flattery has got you exactly where you are. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, all good. Really great to meet you. And I have been thinking about this chat for weeks because we've been talking about when we would do it and so on. We've been kind of planning it. And I was thinking, is Kieran going to be able to do a video where he's sitting <laughs> down as soon as you appeared on my screen? Nope, there you were, <laughs> dancing around. <laughs> straight standing up, straight standing up. In character. <laughs> Your channel is quite new, and you are quite a booktuber. So for the people watching that have never heard of or seen you, uh, please tell us about yourself. So, hi, I'm Kieran-Daniel Evans. Hope you're doing well. Um, I started about three months ago on Booktube with kind of a promise to myself now to the internet to read every single man booker winner. And it's kind of escalated to a point <laughs> that I wasn't expecting. And now I'm running a, a book club where we go into every single book of 2020 long-listed book. It's been quite a whirlwind of a ride, but one I've been just, just swept away with. And I've absolutely loved every moment. That's awesome. So we are going to do a separate chat about this year's booker. Well, in fact, that video will have gone up by now and this is more general do you limit your videos to booker titles only I haven't thought that you did no. no so i've had a few projects that i'm trying to work on and one of them which are kind of ongoing is reading every ali smith book oh. because i have an absolute disdain for the author oh, oh, <laughs> the oh interesting. I, I hate every book i've read like, by, Ali Smith. <laughs> by Ali Smith. Very established as an author. She's very, like, well-renowned. She's lauded, critically acclaimed, won, like, loads of awards. We've had, like, the Orwell Prize. She's normally shortlisted for a booker. And the Women's Prize she does normally well in. I've never got it, like, at all. So I've got Summer by Ali Smith, which is her most recent book. It's that came out on the 3rd of August. So I've reviewed that one. Oh, so you have read it. And okay. I've read it, yep. So I've done the seasonal quartet as a full. Yeah, I've been reading her <laughs> for, because I'm a glutton for punishment, apparently. I was going to say, glutton for punishment. <laughs> and then other books that are normally ones that have either been gifted to me, because I feel as though there's, I don't know, if someone sent me a book, I, I should read it rather than just let it sit up on this pile behind me which is all my to be read books so I got sent my friend's book who recently got published oh. so it was his debut mm. so I read that one and I've been working through as well some J.M. Kutseya because I've never found a book I have not liked but at the moment Booker and Man Booker has completely taken over my life <laughs> Before we go back to Ali Smith for a minute, do you want to shout out your friend's book? Yeah, we'll shout him out. So, yeah, my friend's book, uh, Oscar Uyanik, he's a British Turk, and his book is called Conception, which was published by Fairlight Books. And it is about a artist who wants to make it big in the art world for his paintings aren't doing so well so he decides to take a more performative art based but it's very much along the lines of is it Maria Abramovich? Uh-huh. Yeah so it's very like the act itself is grotesque. I don't want to spoil it That's or what good. happens. Well the title's conception is kind of the conception of this idea and does he go through with the act he wants to do for art to make himself famous? Uh, there's a lot of talk as well between like transatlantic ideas and cultures. Uh -huh. So where the artist doesn't fit into the UK because he's he looks Turkish 
as well everyone assumes he's an Arab, but when he's over in Turkey, people see him as culturally British. So there's a lot of like disconnect as well. It, it, it's really good. It is really good. Yeah, I met Oscar when I was doing my master's in English, uh-huh. when I was studying in Cardiff. Yeah, as soon as he let me know, I was like straight on that one. So I contacted the publisher straight away. And yeah, read it like within three days when it hit the house. Is there, have you uh, talked about it on your channel that I can point people toward a video about that or forthcoming? Or? Uh, yeah, I have, I have done the review of that okay, as well. Great. I will link to that in the show notes. And uh, Ali Smith. So I have had mixed <laughs> results with Ali Smith. I really liked Autumn. That was the first one. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. Oh, and, it. <laughs> and, and then uh, about a year later, I read the. So the next one was what? Winter. 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 And I thought I loved it, but it's not aging well in my memory. That often happens where I think especially when it's a book that lots of other people love and I kind of get swept up. I'm pretty yeah. independent minded. I think you might know that about me, but sometimes I kind of get into that thing and I don't really sort out my own subjective opinion until after I put the book down. So I'm not sure about winter anymore. And so what I've decided to do with the quartet is just, I'm not going to finish the quartet mm-hmm. in about 10 years. I'm going to read the whole thing and see how it stands up. I think with Ali Smith, generally, so I've read seven of her books now. Wow. I think over the course, I think I'm correct in saying that. And the, the quartet's a really interesting one. So I've read them as they come out on publication date. And I always got a lot more from them then than when I've revisited them. So before summer came out, I reread Winter. Mm-hmm. And because it's very... Like, it's just like an extremely like British zeitgeist novel. Sure. That some things just went like completely over my head, or I kind of had to like think that what was happening in Britain in um, 2018 when Winter was published, which is a lot of that. And Summer is the same. It's very now. So a lot of what she talks about in Summer happened as recently as June this year. So you have like the, the COVID epidemic, you have people wearing masks on the street, this kind of tension between what Boris is doing with the country. But I do find that Ali Smith's books don't, um, I don't know if they age well, I just don't think they're memorable. Yeah, so that's why I, do, I don't even like, want to look all, yeah. at again until, until <clears throat> so I assume you've read, the only other one of hers I've read is How to Be Both. <laughs> I will get it this one i have the exact same edition (laughs) and i loved the half about the teenage girl and hated the other half i'll be francesco the uh, the artist yeah so i recently did a buddy read with this with cj reads so she's never read ali smith before Uh but kind of came across my channel and found my hatred (laughs) for ali smith so i said well let's let's read it this was the first one i ever read i think i read it 2016 but when it came out, maybe? In 2014, this came uh-huh, out. Yeah, yeah. I went and ran. So it was two years later. And I remember finishing it. And I threw it across a coffee shop. So I was so... <laughs> I was like, I have wasted so much time on this novel. But she agreed with me. She was like, I didn't get it. But what... With your book, which sections first? Because in each copy, they swapped around. Yeah, mine was with the girl. Mine was, oh yeah, okay, so mine's the same, yeah. but CJ's was the Renaissance painter first. Yeah. So I've read it both ways, but equally it didn't impress. What, what did you think of it? I loved the story about the girl whose mother had died and all that stuff, and yeah. I, I, I connected with it. The one about the Re, was it Renaissance, right? Renaissance dude. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't care about him or anything that was happening with him, so... It, most of it just goes completely over my head. I didn't get a personal <laughs> connection to anything, and that's the most important thing for me in my reading. She's a Marmite writer. People either love her, yeah. hate her. I, I, I'm maybe I shouldn't say she's not a Marmite. You know, I'm just kind of got a split personality about her so far, <laughs> and I'm not going to worry about her for a while. Not going to read anymore. She's just. I think she's just a difficult author. Like, she's very, like, complex. There's a lot of allusions in her work. There's a lot of metaphor. And I think if you don't click with them early on, Mm. I think it it is a tendency to kind of lose track of what's going on. 
which with Winter, I found I didn't really get what was going on or what was being said. And then I was the same then with Spring and Hotel World by her. I kind of like, I don't know, what's, what's the word? I just didn't get what she was trying to tell me. But and I don't really uh, like my fiction to be telling me anything in particular anyway. That's not what I want mm. in fiction. <laughs> now, I love the, in Winter, I love the one character, the one that was pretending to be his girlfriend. I, I love oh, that. Oh, Lux? Lux or is it Charlotte? Uh, maybe. I, I think, I think so. <laughs> I've only read it a month ago and I've already forgotten. Yeah, I don't know about his names, but I, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I thought that was interesting because it sounds like the accidental, that storyline. But that's about a girl who kind of enters a family and I think they don't know. Or she kind of like moves into the family in different ways. Mm -hmm. But it does sound like very much of that was in Winter, which I haven't read the accidental, so maybe I'm completely wrong. It's done very differently. But I remember reading it thinking, I'll we meant to be aware of the accidental of what's being spoken there. I wasn't sure. So you are reading her complete works. You are a, a glutton for uh -huh. punishment. So I know who you don't like. Who do you love? Who do I love? You have a favorite. Wise, oh, I would probably say, probably by all time, is Salman Rushdie. Oh, I wow. love everything that he's written. So I studied him for my MA. And if I, if I get my PhD offer fulfilled, I'll be studying him oh. for that as well. Oh. So I just think he's, every book's a little bit different. Hmm. My favorite one is the Satanic Verses. <laughs> All the that is completely surrounded in controversy, still to this day. But I recently read Midnight's Children by him as well. And that as a novel is just like spectacular. That's like, what I've heard. I have it's sitting on read on my shelf. I haven't read anything that he's written, but I do have that one on my shelf. And yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It's not that it's like just a fiction book, it's also like a history book at the same time. So he really like details what was going on in India from its independence past. Indira Gandhi's emergency years but if you look into like the aspects he's playing with so there's some circumstances certain laws that were passed based on like absolute scandals in India but he's subverting what's going on but it just made the whole process of learning India's history just enthralling but it's won loads of awards so I don't know why I was, was scared of reading it that had been putting her off for like five years. It's not an easy read, is what everybody says. No, I was a study guide person all the way through. <laughs> just <laughs> kind of like figuring like, what's going on. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. That's great. So, so if you go on to do a PhD and you're going to be uh, focusing on Rushdie, what aspect or what's your... Oh, so I do it a continuation for my MA thesis. Uh, basically, what I looked at was the, the Satanic School of Poetry, which is Percy Bysshe Shelley and Lord Byron, and looking at how they influenced a atheistic movement in literature and how that landscaped and put a legacy in for modern British literature. Huh. So I was kind of comparing what Rushdie's doing in the Satanic Verses, where he's subverted a lot of religion in that book and how Shelley and Byron are also doing that. Oh. Um, and then this will be just like a, a, a bigger exploration. So I'll be looking at Dostoevsky, uh, Bulgakov, compared to Nietzsche as well. I'll be looking at Faust by Goethe, and also Faustus by Thomas Mann. Yeah, a lot of like satanic imagery all the way through it. Yeah, philosophy, I'll be looking at Kierkegaard, specifically like either awe and fear and trembling all of Nietzsche's work and then Slavoj Zizek if you've heard of him who's a modern uh, yes comedian. unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> all of which, to... my reaction to all of this is holy smokes you are amazing <laughs> and uh, I oh my god 
more power to you. <laughs> Gee, I gotta read the books though. <laughs> so <laughs> I did my masters at that time. I don't know what English academic uh, life is like now, but when I was uh, embroiled in it in the nineties, it was so mm -hmm. screwed up with post-structuralist theory, and you couldn't read a novel unless you were willing to do a Foucauldian analysis of it. And, I see. <laughs> it turned me off reading fiction for, for about 10 years <laughs> afterwards. It was interesting because that was the moment I started reading because I did English and drama for my BA, but I didn't study English for my A level, which you, you normally have to have. You did drama? <laughs> Color me surprised. I, oh, I know. <laughs> Why am I even? <laughs> so, yeah, no, so I got into university based on my, my drama grades. I just thought, oh, I'll do English on the side because it's just reading books, which I never used to do. But they kind of took a punt on me. I remember the first lecture I did was about post-structuralism and deconstruction, like the theories on it, and thinking I am way out have, of my you depth. Should have given me, you should have given me a trigger warning before you mentioned <laughs> those topics. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and I had to do them on Wuthering Heights. Oh, <laughs> what, oh, what a horrific book that was. <laughs> oh, what, what do you mean? You don't like it? Oh, the worst book I've ever read, Weather and oh, Heights. Don't them spiting words, Kieran. Oh, oh I know. I do. It was the only book I have fell asleep reading, and I fell asleep twice during the same page. There was a two-page chapter, and I was like, I can't, do, I can't deal with this, and I have loathed it to this day. Well, you <laughs> If, if we're still speaking to each other in five years, I would like to challenge you to read Wuthering Heights again, and I'll read some Zizek or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll happily do that. Five years, though. Five years. So you got, we got to be nice, nice enough to each other that we're still, still in contact. Yeah, I love Wuthering Heights. I just reread it last year and loved it even more. I think I've read it a few times in my life. The rest of the Bronte suck as I, far as I'm concerned. I, I, <laughs> oh, no, everyone likes Jane Eyre. Oh, I study Jane Eyre and I feel as though I held on to 14 year old Kieran hating Jane Eyre. And the more I've thought about it, the more I absolutely have adored it. Uh, Rochester's the and... only good thing about Jane Eyre. Oh, I liked, I think, I, God, and I haven't read this since I was 14, but it's Helen, who's the girl that dies in like, the orphanage. Mm, no, it, it's like a very minor moment. Is it the, where does she go before she becomes a governess? It's the workhouse? Uh, yeah, well, There's this girl called then, Helen, she yeah, dies. Then goes maybe to an orphanage, you're right. Or no, she... I yeah. Think it was at first, I don't remember uh, first the character you're talking about. But. It's so minor. It's so... But, like, I have loved her completely. I remember, <laughs> I remember like, focusing on that, like, way too much. And it's the same with Wuthering Heights. The only scene I remember is where Heathcliff throws hot apple sauce at a guest. Yes. Very slight moment. Very slight moment. But very that has, dramatic moment. That has stuck with me. It's a very dry way he just throws hot apple sauce at someone. That's the only thing I can remember from Wuthering Heights. I have blanked everything else. My favorite moment, <laughs> my favorite moment of Wuthering Heights is just a line that I use in the most dramatic, gayest situations possible whenever we're talking about something about literature. And I, anytime I have a chance to use this line, I say... Nelly, I am Heathcliff. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, it's just, I don't know why people like it. Like, I'm sure Emily Bronte could have figured out another name for Kathy rather than Catherine. I know she has it in her. And I just, oh, it was too confusing. It was way too confusing. This, this, uh, oh, this is from the uh, expert clear. on uh, Rushdie, and Wuthering Heights is too confusing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that this is the guy who likes like Zizek, <laughs> post-structuralist. <laughs> yeah, and my other favorite book, which I know you despise, are my first ever like book that like changed me, David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. Yeah, I will try it again, but no, it was not a good experience for me. I didn't get very far into it, and. I, uh, no. oh. But it's a very. I love his debut novel, The Broom, broom in the System. Yeah. I didn't get on with that one. <laughs> there you go. So we are just. I didn't uh, know what was going. 
I know. We're very different. <laughs> we're, the, we're the yin to my yang. I know. All we need to talk about now is, is normal people, and we'll be everything will be set in the universe, I feel. We both loved that one, didn't we? No. Oh, no. Normal people. Oh, what utter garbage that book was. I can't tell you how disappointed I was in it. Uh, I was waiting for you to come up with the review that was going to, like, solidify everything I didn't, and you loved it. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it's, like, not the, my book of the year, but it, I, I loved it, and it's still, it's aging well, yeah. And I don't think I'm just being contrary, kind of, I did connect with it. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it was about it. It just seemed, like, subtle, virgin, onto bland for me. But that equally, that's a kind of like po- people either like adore it or hate it. Yes, and but, I lost um, a I... booktube friend. <laughs> 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 but I did watch a TV series, and it was okay. I heard that. It, I heard I, that some it, people it, who hated the book liked the TV show. It was okay. I mean, Coddle wasn't bad to look at. So. I was there for the ride. That suits the picture in my mind, yeah. <laughs> if you've not watched it, you need to watch it. Yeah, I don't can't I get at to. it. Can't get it here in Japan yet, but eventually I will. Oh. Let's just pause all this bookless chat because there's something even more pressing going on in your world. What's that? There is. Um, I will well by the time this comes out, I will have a, a brand new child brought to the world. Well, will be my second. That's... So I'll have two screaming daughters 24 7 and i cannot think of anything better to be honest that's so fantastic. yeah it's gonna be really weird looking back at this still <laughs> like you, in the future but a note to self kieran you got this you're you fine got this. you got that's this. Just a little bit of positive affirmation i'll need <laughs> so <laughs> yeah no we're really looking forward so we haven't we're... got names <laughs> haven't got names well, we think we got a name. We think uh-huh. we got a name. Shauna. Um, I'm not. No. Oh, I knew. I knew a. Sh- I knew a Shauna. Oh, and if she ever comes across this, oh gosh, could you imagine? No. After knowing her, no. 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 So. <laughs> Has the the due date's come and gone, right? Uh yes, that was last week. That's right. So yeah, last, last Thursday. So um, we have. Um, five days time. Um, if nothing happens, she will be induced. And then she will be. Oh, uh, that will be the twenty fourth, which will be quite nice because she will be the twenty fourth. Um, uh, Dora will be the twenty fifth. I'll just be the twenty sixth, and I'm the twenty seventh of the same month. So I sh- uh, of different months. Different months, but those, yeah. But. An easy way to remember her birthday, right. but I mean, when I'm old and aging. <laughs> and how old is Dora? She will be, well, there'll be two months between them. So yeah, she'll be two in October. Wow. So. Very exciting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's all over the place at the moment. She started walking when she was like nine months and it's been a little bit crazy. So. Her yeah. father's daughter. <laughs> I know, tell me about it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think she's excited. She keeps saying no when we talk about that there's going to be a baby. But I think she's just it's a little joke to her. <laughs> but she's, I don't, I mean, like, we have no idea, like, if she is aware, which is quite interesting. Because she kind of has the I we think we know. But we don't. That made no sense, that sentence. <laughs> so <laughs> it sense to me. And uh, so everybody out there, if this uh, video stops suddenly, you know that uh, the baby came. Kieran had to go. Yeah, it could literally be any moment. I could just have Alex screaming down the stairs. <laughs> in a, what a way to end the video that would be. I would just be... I'd be <laughs> I did prep her before she went up to bed. I was like, just to let you know, if you can keep it quiet. <laughs> She's a good sport. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, but yeah, literally any moment now, which is a little bit petrifying. Mm. Um, 
but I think we're ready. I think we've we've done it once. We'll figure it out again. So <laughs> good luck, and I won't say congratulations in advance, but yeah, exciting. I know. And you are Welsh. Could you tell by the horrific accent? Yes, I am. You live in Wales. And Which am... is how I came across your channel. Oh, how, is that how you found me? That's how I... So I queued your name, but I hadn't clicked on any mm -hmm. links until some... I think it was Greg I mentioned that you were reading a lot of Welsh literature. And I, like, picked up the years and I headed straight over... And I remember my first comment, she was, oh, you're reading Welsh literature. So I think you were, you picked up a really obscure book. Was it Gwendolyn or Gwyn? Ah, oh, Davis. I can't remember the name. Gwen Davis. Yes. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. But I said straight away, being like, oh, it's great that we see, like, another person on YouTube who's Welsh. And your comment was like, I'm Canadian, I live in Japan. And I was like, oh, I'm so close. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's one of those um, things, I just got into it. I mean, I had a Welsh English teacher in high school in, in small town Saskatchewan, but that didn't get me interested in reading Welsh literature, but that mm -hmm. was my first and really only encounter with a Welsh person until very until book two, basically. But it was when I was preparing a TBR for Women in Translation Month, and I didn't want to read the same books as you know about me. I don't like to read the same books that everybody else is reading. So I, I was looking for other books that were translated by women and that kind of stumbled on Welsh. And so Gwen Davis was the, the one that I found. I've read a fair amount of Anglo-Welsh and Welsh, uh, translated Welsh literature. Do you read literature from your own country? No. <laughs> I want to make an effort, but I do feel with the publishing industry in Wales, it's either all Welsh language, which a majority of people from the south of Wales don't speak uh -huh. at all, or if it is spoken, it's because you went to a Welsh language school or your family speak it, but it's very rare in South Wales like to speak it on a day-to-day -day basis, unless you know the right people who can speak it. Um, you're, in, you're in South Wales? I'm in South Wales, uh -huh. yeah, so I'm from the Rong Valley. So about an hour's drive from the capital, Cardiff. So right in the south. And then you'll have West Wales, which is Cardigan around there. There's a little bit of Welsh pocket. And then North Wales is very Welsh speaking. Like completely Welsh speaking. But their Welsh is different to South Welsh. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of bitter rivalry between the two Welshes of whose Welsh is the best. Welsh and obviously, and obviously, all the people who don't speak it in the south say it's theirs. So, <laughs> it was a great conversation. There's a lot of writing that's been published that's just in the Welsh language, but because a lot of people don't speak Welsh, you have like in bookshops they have like a special Welsh section, which is always like chock a block because no one's buying it, because no one speaks it. I would say no one. A small group of people will buy it. But currently, there's a lot of translated from the Welsh into the English. Hmm. Yeah, so that's um, Gwen, Gwen Davis, as I've read now. I'm on my second Gwen Davis novel yeah. that's been translated. Yeah, so like books that have come up like, through, like two years ago are now being translated in English, which is good, but still they don't get the publicity at all, because... If, if you're speaking about like you know English English language authors, you you'll never think of anyone Welsh like off the top of your head. I do want to have like a resurgence in Welsh literature, but yeah, I just find it's very if it is publicised, it's also in the Welsh language, yeah, yeah. unless you're like actively seeking it out. So you probably know of like the Eisteddfod. Pardon. At uh, the Eisteddfod. Ah uh, yes. I'd never heard it pronounced, so thank you. I was always, I've oh. read the, the, the word, but didn't know how it was pronounced. Can you say it again more slowly? Eisteddfod. Good, and tell us what that is. Uh, yes, yeah, so Eisteddfod is a big celebration of art in Wales, yeah. where people basically win competitions on, I believe I'm right, because I've never actually been, because it's all in Welsh language, which is based on art, poetry, and 
fiction or the written works, uh, but it all stems back from the pagans and the druids. So if you watch the Eisteddfon, there's a lot of people dressed up in like traditional religious outfits mm -hmm. to give out. And there's like this huge ceremony with a, a throne and a sword that gets held over your head. And it's a very odd experience because the second school I went to, I won the, the school I stead bod for drama. Why am I, I not surprised? <laughs> and so if someone like blows a trumpet, you get dragged up by two people. And then people just scream the word heroic at you three times. And then you just leave. It, it's a very odd ceremony if you're not a way or party to it. Yeah, but they had a bit of controversy that I stand for. I think it was in 2017 because someone won with an English language work. Oh. And it was a lot of heavy tutting about that one. But I think it's good. I, I think there should be a surgence in English speaking Welsh works, which I don't think happens at all. I've had many conversations with people I know who are in publishing and author friends of mine. Um, I like the creative group in Cardiff. So I do a little bit like spoken word and poetry. You do? And the, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I do it now and then I crop up when, when the baby's sleeping. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll have any time that the second one's coming. <laughs> so yeah, I do a lot of spoken word and poetry. But there is that kind of like tension between like, if I could write it in Welsh, would I have a better chance of publication? There's always that tension of pull, but the history of South Wales doesn't allow itself to naturally speak Welsh. I could bore you with that topic if you wanted. <laughs> sure. Um, so where I come from, which is the Rhonda, there was a uh, basically a huge mining boom. So a lot of collieries, a lot of miners, as the Welsh do. But it brought over a influx of people from England, Scottish, Ireland, and a lot of people in Europe. So it's like a big like Polish community, um, a few Hungarians uh -huh. as well that have been here for like years. So obviously, rather than trying to force everyone to speak Welsh, English became the logical go-to. Mm -hmm. So all, especially through the Ronda, unless you go to a specific Welsh school, you're just not going to be taught it because my parents have never spoken a word of Welsh in their entire lives. My grandparents never learnt a single word of Welsh. But at the moment, like, um, so when I was in school, we had to learn it from three to 16. Ah. But like, what I got taught would be called like a fairly basic French yeah. lesson, like right. adult French 101, but that was like my uh, like GCSE to certificate like to leave school with. So it's all a little bit of, I don't know, I think a movement to kind of let's get people to speak Welsh, but let's not teach them, teach them too much. Mm -hmm. But just like a, like a tick box exercise. That's how I always viewed Welsh in school because I came out speaking a lot more German than I did Welsh. There's quite a few Anglo-Welsh writers, a lot of literature that, most of the literature that I've read from Wales was written in English. Mm -hmm. So are you, have you read or enjoyed any of that? I enjoy Ken Follett, who did the Pillars of the Earth. Ken Follett is Welsh, wow, see, there you he's go. He's from I... Cardiff, he's from the city centre, but again, like, who knows that he's Welsh? Yeah. I remember I finished the book because it was when I left my previous job. It was gifted to me. And he was like, it's amazing. And once I checked up who Ken Follett was, I was like, why is it like, like how didn't I know this? Yeah. Wow. Um, so there's always like a panic in me that I've probably read Welsh authors, but have no idea. I just kind of assume that they're English. Because I feel as though if you're Scottish or Irish, it's very much heavily emphasized they're from Scotland and Ireland. And Welsh is probably, well, I, you know, I, I, I'd argue it's probably still viewed as like a principality of England rather than its own country due to Henry VIII and his, uh, yes. his little escapades. So, uh, <laughs> so there's Ken Follett, so he's got a new book coming out, which is the prequel to The Pillars of the Earth, oh. which I might 
forget, I think it's called The Guardians of Something. Mm-hmm. But that's recently coming out. And I am being sent a copy of a novel. I can't remember the name, but it's Martha, Jack and Shanto. And it won the Welsh oh, Book of oh, the Year oh, this year. That's Gwen Davis. Oh, so that's, If you found me through Gwen Davis at that book, I have a full review of it, yeah. Oh, right. I just started her second one to be translated, The Jeweler. I've read about 20 pages, and it's really good. Carol and Lewis, yes. Translated... Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, Carol Lewis is the Martha Jack and Carol, Car- Carol Lewis is the writer. Gwen Davis is the translator. So I have been saying Gwen Davis as the author, but no, she's the translator, Carol Lewis. So ah, Martha right. Jack and Shanko, author is Carol Lewis, translated into English by Gwen Davis. Oof. <laughs> Martha Jack and Shanko. I enjoyed it very much. I am looking forward to it. It sounded interesting. I know nothing really much far of the blurb. Kieran, is, we'll wrap things up now, but it was great to have you on my channel, and I hope you'll come back. I would love to be invited back. And I am here by uh, uh, commanding all of my followers <laughs> to go check you out. And uh, Thank you very much. Well, thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.